see if I can change the orientation again. Landscape mode. Okay, so it might be giving me problems. Well, we'll just see if we can turn that frown upside down. We can always edit this out for the YouTube. That's the lovely thing about modern media. And hello everybody. Let me test and see if my uh, screen will flip. Yes, it will. That is awesome. And don't worry folks, I'll be editing in higher resolution images later on. Get rid of that. Oopsie, actually let me test something. This is me testing something again. Okay, we're good. So give me a second folks again this will all be edited out in the YouTube version um, and for now let's uh, let's have a quick video let's start out come on camera flip just testing my screen orientation photo of my kitty top of my head's cut off a little bit short thank you very much Jenny that's exactly what I need to know there we go my kitty Freya now that we've got all the testing out of the way, hello everybody and welcome to our Winnipeg Worldcon bid in 2023 Twitch TV channel. This August 1st, 2021 broadcast will be propagated to YouTube in the coming days, so please feel free to ask questions there uh, on the YouTube video uh, chat or comment section, as well as here in the live chat. Um, I'm not too worried about the top of my head being cut off because my hair is a little bit messy, but uh, we'll go from there. I'm Lori E. Smith, the social media host for this Twitch TV channel, as well as for the Zoom and Discord socials we have planned in the weeks to come. Next week is a special week because we will be streaming a Zoom broadcast to YouTube featuring interviews with members of the KeyCon community. For those who don't know, KeyCon is Manitoba's longest running science fiction and fantasy convention. Uh, it held its 38th annual event virtually in May of this year. Normally, of course, it's an in-person event, about a three to five hundred person convention. So more of an old fashioned style convention, which which I love. Um, and so KeyCon boasts a long and rich fanish history, which will bring great value to a Winnipeg Worldcon in 2023. So we'll be talking to some of the KeyCon people about that and many other things. Today's Twitch TV episode, whoopsie, better tighten that up. And of course, can I find the tightening mechanism now? I cannot. Oh, well. Today's Twitch TV episode was specially requested by our bid committee and will focus on a topic of great interest to potential Winnipeg Worldcon 20 and 23 attendees, which is the restaurant scene in downtown Winnipeg. Because everyone loves to eat, right? And Janny just said slow down because there's lag between your voice and the video. Let's try that. Now, because I have a lot of great things to talk about today, I will be tackling the account I promised about a profoundly strange historical disaster in our next Twitch TV episode. The hint is still, how fast does molasses run in January? And the answer to that hint is around 35 miles per hour with a wave peak of 25 feet above street level. This event is so weird that if a fiction writer came up with it, people would accuse that fiction writer of being totally unrealistic, but it did happen and we'll talk about it next time. In terms of the Winnipeg restaurant scene, it is important to remember and keep in mind that this list is current as of now. COVID-19 closures might change some elements of the local culinary scene, but this being Winnipeg, new high quality restaurants are going to crop up to fill any gaps that may arise. Also, this is a very partial list, partial. I'm sure I'm missing somebody's local favorites because there are so many high quality eateries that it's hard to remember them all, frankly, especially in the downtown area. So let's get right down to business. I have a map for you. And let's see if I will, if the, uh, if it'll actually show up well. Then changing the camera angle. There we go. I will edit it in a higher resolution map in the final. Um, okay, so what have we got here? You can find this map at www.wcc.mb.ca slash Winnipeg. It is from the RBC Convention Center, which is our convention center. Ah, and, and Janie just posted the link in the comments. Thank you, Janie. Now, this big pink rectangle right here 
is the RBC Convention Center, where, where most of the convention will be held, and out of Winnipeg Worldcon in 2023. And the main convention hotel, the Delta Winnipeg, is this little red square right here. The main thoroughfares running through downtown Winnipeg are the six-lane Portage Avenue, running east to west, that's right here. The six-lane Main Street, which is this running right here. And also um, Broadway, which as you can see is just south of the RBC Convention Center and is also a Main Street. As well as Memorial Boulevard, which is over here. And Memorial Boulevard runs through the more or less um, kind of western end of downtown and runs right down into all into an area down here called Osborne Village which is a fairly short distance from downtown now all of these thoroughfares have crosswalks at every intersection including the underground concourse at Portage and Main so they do not inhibit travel from one area of downtown to another unlike some cities where big uncrossable multi-lane highways split up the downtown area plus it's hard to tell from this map, but Winnipeg city blocks are quite short compared to most American city blocks. I am not a fast walker. I, I, I amble. And I can do one of the long blocks here, these ones are running north to south, in less than three minutes. So they're pretty short. A lot of downtown Winnipeg is connected through the skywalk system as well, so if the weather is inclement or you simply prefer not to go outside, you can get around pretty easily. Janny asked me to mention walking times. Now, just to give you an idea of the size of the area, um, if you're ambling, like me, uh, it's roughly, here is the RBC Convention Center in the Delta Winnipeg from this area, it's roughly 10 or 15 minutes to the Exchange District up here and also to the Theatre District. And basically, that, so that's the Exchange District and the Theatre District, as well as to the Forks over here, which also has restaurants and attractions. Um, it takes approximately 15 or 20 minutes to walk down this way, down Memorial Boulevard to Osborne Street, which will take you to Osborne Village. Also, if you should need help while on the streets of downtown Winnipeg, you can spot foot patrol members of the Downtown Community Safety Partnership by looking for their black jackets and green toques. Uh, a toque is a kind of knit cap, by the way. You can learn more about them and what they do at their website, which is www.dcsp.ca. They are friendly, they want to help, and they are not the police. They deal only with nonviolent issues. If you need non-emergency help, simply call 211 and trained Downtown Community Safety Partnership phone personnel will be on hand to help you. So let's talk about restaurants, shall we? And food trucks as well. I'm just going to switch the angle here from the map. And I'm back. Food trucks as well. We want to talk about those because Winnipeg in August, when the Winnipeg in 23 committee will host its convention, is food truck heaven. Oh my God. Like over 100 languages are spoken in our city and our publicly available cuisine reflects that. Whenever there's a major event at the RBC Convention Center, food trucks flock to the building. And I mean flock. And if you don't happen to like anything on offer at the convention center itself, Remember how I pointed to Broadway that was just like a very short block south of the convention center? Go there. Walk that short block to Broadway and you'll find a lot more trucks for your dining pleasure. A Google search for Winnipeg food trucks will bring up some partial lists of available trucks and Jenny will be posting a link to the tourism Winnipeg food truck list in a moment. She's already got it up there, excellent. Um, one of my personal favorite trucks which is not on that list is the bridge drive-in truck. Because the Bridge Drive-In, or BDI, serves soft ice cream with the best hot fudge topping in Winnipeg. Other trucks on the Tourism Winnipeg list feature Korean cuisine, let me make sure I have the whole list here, Korean cuisine, sushi, smoked brisket and barbecue, Aboriginal cuisine, Middle Eastern dishes, East Indian yum-yums, Filipino food, gelati and ice cream, and of course burgers, wraps and pizza, the holy trinity of food trucks, plus so much more from lemonade all the way to poutine. So check out our food trucks and perhaps discover your new favorite nosh in the process. The RBC Convention Center also offers an on-site restaurant. And during past events I've attended there, they have also put in pop-up kiosks in the convention space itself where you can grab everything from a taco in a bag to healthy muffins and wraps. So there's a lot of options there. Now, moving outside the convention center area, I'm just going to switch back to the map again. 
Moving outside the convention center area here, let's go up here to the Exchange District and the Theater District, which are both located north of Portage Avenue here. And again, Portage Avenue is a six-lane highway, but it has crosswalks at every intersection, so it's very easy to move from one area to another. At exchangedistrictdining.com, you'll find four pages of listings for restaurants in our eclectic exchange district, where if you keep your eyes open, you may also spot film crews from all over North America, because the architecture there is world famous. Exchange District Cuisine, switching back to me for a minute, Da, 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 da. Hello again. Exchange District Cuisine. I need some more ginger ale. Ah, Canada Dry Ginger Ale too. Canadian brand. Um, Exchange District Cuisine ranges from national chains like Subway and Tim Hortons to local chains like Salisbury House, all the way to quirky restaurants like that are originals to Winnipeg, like Peasant Cookery, Smoke's Poutinery, and the Nonsuch Brewing Company. If you're looking for a great beer tasting experience, I highly recommend the Nonsuch Brewing Company. It's fair to say that the Exchange District is packed with great food. And I, have to, and I have to particularly mention the Winnipeg Free Press News Cafe, where you can meet and chat with journalists, which is pretty cool, as well as Shawarma Khan, a short distance from there. Uh, the Winnipeg uh, News Press Cafe, while well, I point to the map again, um, uh, actually I'll go back to the map. The Winnipeg News Press Cafe is somewhere around this area right here, near the, near the corner of Porridge and Maine. And close by it is, is Shawarma Khan, which serves some of the best shawarma in town. Really awesome stuff. If you're looking for upscale dining, Bailey's Restaurant and Bar, which is located over here, close to the Portage and Maine intersection, serves up what is arguably the best prime rib in the city. The prices are steep, but the food and the service are beyond amazing. Let me just grab a couple of visuals for you. Nope, that's the king's head. This is Bailey's. Doesn't that look swanky? It is totally swanky. As I say, the prices are steep, but the food and the service are beyond amazing. You are treated like royalty in an opulent setting, and everything on the menu is first rate. And let's switch back to me for a minute. Also, on the upscale food category is Peasant Cookery, a first-class French restaurant where their charcuterie board made with meats prepared in-house is a delicious highlight. And let's go to another photo, because this is one of my favorite places in the Exchange District, the King's Head Pub and Eatery. This is available for folks who would like to get their British on. It is definitely one of my favorite restaurants, as I noted. Look at that. Amazing. And it has so many kinds of beer on tap. It's great. The Yellow Dog Tavern, which is not far away from the King's Head, is, it also offers great beers nachos and similar pub grub. And the King's Head is within an, easily, an easy five minute walk of the shawarma restaurant I just mentioned, as well as the uh, journalist club. Dim Sum Garden in Winnipeg's Chinatown, north of the Exchange District. Back to the map roughly around here. So again, within, it's all within pretty much an easy five to seven block minute walk. The Dim Sum Garden in Winnipeg's Chinatown, north of the Exchange District and just behind City Hall here, serves some of the best Chinese food in the city, I kid you not. It's been a traditional post Keycon stop for decades, and that kind of brand loyalty speaks highly of the quality of their menu. And of course, I have to mention the Across the Board Game Cafe. Let me get another photo for you. Okay, I have it. Ah, uh, there's Across the Board. Just look at that. Across the Board near City Hall on, on Main Street offers a wide selection of board games that you can play, as you can see, while enjoying their tasty menu of pizzas, sandwiches, burgers, curry, pastas, and much more. Now, moving east, down to the Forks here. Again, here's the RBC Convention Center. This is the Forks. It's an easy 10 to 12 minute walk, I would say. We hit the Forks area at the, junctions of our, at the junction of our city's two main rivers. The Forks has many restaurants and fast food kiosks on site, including a Winnipeg classic, dun, da, 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 the old Spaghetti Factory. 
The old spaghetti factory in the Johnston Terminal is in the running for the highest quotient of kitsch per square foot of any restaurant in Winnipeg, in my opinion. But it's kitsch of the best kind and is guaranteed to warm your heart. Now, queuing up the next photo, heading back west toward Portage Avenue, headed over this way. Again, here's the RBC Convention Center. This is Portage Avenue and here's the fourth. So headed over this way. We hit the Radisson Hotel here on, here on Porridge Avenue, which has a 12th floor restaurant, as well as Moxie's at the MTS Center in this area, as well as Portage Place and City Place. There's Portage Place and there's City Place in relation to the Convention Center, which, and, the, and uh, Portage Place and City Place are shopping malls, so they both feature highly affordable food courts. Now, if you're going south a little bit, back to the Delta, which is the, uh, which is the convention hotel, the main convention hotel, you have the Elephant and Castle Pub, which is on the ground floor of the Delta Winnipeg, again, our main convention hotel, and offers deli delicious, delicious British style food in a classic dark wood panel setting. On Kennedy Street near Portage Avenue, totally separate kind of ambiance, the White Star Diner, which I don't have a picture of, the White Star Diner, one of my favorite downtown eateries. It is a little hole-in-the-wall restaurant. It's, it's a classic diner in the best possible sense of the word. It serves great comfort food plus over 30, this times 10, 30 varieties of milkshakes written by hand on a big blackboard above, the, above their cooking area. It's, it's a great little place. I would say it maybe suits, um, I guess maybe 20 people maximum. Well, well, it has something like four, it has something like twelve or fourteen tables, and I will warn you, it's an accessibility issue with the White Star Diner because their bathroom is down two flights of stairs. So if you have accessibility issues, please be very careful about the White Star Diner. Um, great food, but not great bathroom accessibility. We also have a keg steakhouse on Gary Street. Let me just pull this up here. I don't see where Gary Street is here, but we have a keg steakhouse. It's in the area of the convention center. And also on Gary, Femina's famous roti and curry. And Mitzi's Chicken Finger Restaurant on St. Mary Avenue serves up some of, pardon me, serves up what some call the finest chicken in the city. I personally would agree with them. KFC has nothing on Mitzi's. Um, oh, and the East India Company on York Avenue The East India Company down around here is a must visit. It has, and I'll do a, get a picture of you, for you, of you, maybe. There we go. There's the East India Company. It is an East Indian buffet with gorgeous Indian decor that will immerse you in a magical experience and food that simply can't be beat. Now, if you want to move more toward the Hotel Fort Gary, which is down in this area, so it's a bit of a ways, but it's still not that far from the convention center. The Hotel Fort Gary is, is possibly Winnipeg's most upscale hotel, and its restaurants reflect that. This is the Palm Room. And as you can see, it's gorgeous. Um, the food is, is a little on the pricier side, but magnificent. The Hotel Fort Gary also has a rotating rooftop restaurant called Prairie 360, which is absolutely, absolutely dazzling at night. Just gorgeous. Um, so there's that. And I'm back. Moving south of the downtown area, but not very far, still within walking distance if you're in the mood for a stroll and easily accessible by several bus routes from downtown. You're never more than about a five minute bus wait away from getting to this area of the city. Let's go back to the map. I am talking about Osborne Street Village. Okay, convention center, convention hotel, other restaurants, Osborne Village. Just across the river, just over Broadway and just across the river is Osborne Village. Now, when you get to Osborne Village, which is packed full of restaurants of all different flavors, dun, 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 switch again. The spicy noodle house comes to mind immediately. Um, it deserves a special mention for its soups. It is a spicy noodle house, so it has many different varieties. And if you're ordering in at your hotel and are in the mood for Chinese, my personal favorite Chinese restaurant in the entire city is in Osborne Village. It's called the Oriental Bowl, which has no dine-in, 
Oh, sad face. But excellent takeout and delivery. The, the spring rolls in particular, oh my god, they're delicately fried, full of vegetable shreds and soft thin noodles, subtly flavored with saffron and curry. It's the best in the city again, in my opinion. And no account of Osborne Village, back to the photos, would be complete without a mention of one of the, one of the longest running restaurants, Baked Expectations. It has a semicircular front of all glass, so it's very easy with a big neon baked expectation sign in the window, so it's very easy to find. Um, this is a street level round restaurant which specializes in burgers and the most decadent desserts in the city. There's a whole, um, basically just a whole, there's a whole like big display case full of desserts. Um, and this is, as you can see, in kind of a 1950s retro setting. Their fruit trifle can't be beat and their death by chocolate cake is simply truth in advertising. So, one thing to be aware of in Osborne Street Village restaurants. A few of the restaurants are up, are up or down sets of stairs because there are a couple of malls, one on either side of the street, which are multi-level malls with street access. So if you have mobility issues, and one of the restaurants in Osborne Village sounds appealing to you, you're probably going to want to call ahead to check with them um, to make sure that they're not, you know, up too many stairs or down too many stairs. Osborne Village also has a big shopper's drug mart and a large Sobeys grocery store. If you need over-the-counter medication or you just prefer to buy your food that way, those are options too. And again, all of this is within like maybe a 12 to 15 minute walk of downtown if you've got a good walking pace or one short bus ride from downtown Winnipeg and back. So as you can see, Winnipeg has a vibrant and varied cuisine profile. No matter what your culinary tastes, we are ready and willing to satisfy them, whether in a dine-in setting, setting, dine-in setting, more Canada Dry. Now, this is whether you want a dine-in setting, uh, you want to phone your order in and have it delivered to the hotel, or maybe you prefer to use a delivery service like Skip the Dishes or DoorDash. We have those too. We also feature national change like, like Domino's, Subway, and A&W. So if you're not feeling particularly adventurous, and some people are not when it comes to food, you can also get food from sources that you know and love. So this is only a partial overview of what's available. There is so much to explore in downtown Winnipeg and Osborne Village in terms of food. So a Winnipeg and 23 Worldcon bid win promises attendees a great eating experience, whatever their preferences are. If Winnipeg wins the vote too, we will have a dining guide to Winnipeg freely available for attendees. So you will have some of your questions answered easily and you won't have to go necessarily hunting for information. In closing, not about food. Well, actually it's kind of about food. Um, I'd like to remind folks that the Winnipeg in 23 Applied Refreshing Beverages Photo Contest is happening right now. Winnipeg is the Slurpee capital of Canada. I mean, we love the stuff, regardless of the weather, we drink it all year round. So we invite you to send us a link to a photo of you sipping a semi-frozen beverage of your choice in the most extreme environment, either hot or cold. It needs to be the hottest or the coldest place you can manage. You can put the link in the comments section once this video is reposted to YouTube. Email your photo to us at info at winnipegin2023.ca or send it via any of our social media accounts. The prize is a collection of limited edition Winnipeg in 23 bid swag. And I've seen some of the stuff they have I, I lined up. It's, it's awesome. Deadline for submissions is August 15th, 2021, and the winner will be decided by popular vote and announced on August 31st, 2021. And that's our Twitch TV episode for August 1st, 2021. I hope it made your mouth water as much as mine did while talking about some of the stellar food our city has to offer. And be sure to tune in to our YouTube channel next weekend for an interview with some special guests from the KeyCon Science Fiction and Fantasy Convention community who are going to talk about their convention and about what they have to offer for a Winnipeg in 2023 Worldcon bid. So until next time, folks, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you all again soon.